America's leading deficit hawk. And an individual, the reason I admire him so much, he will give it to the American people with the bark on with no happy talk. Congressman Ken Buck, Republican of Colorado. Congressman Buck, there, there's a story today, and you're primarily featured, the lead story today in the Hill newspaper. We talked in the morning show about this, about your appearance here. And it's all about, you know, the, these kind of more games that are being played by, by, by McCarthy and some of the Republicans. And obviously the Democrats are out of control on this on the, on federal spending and, and government spending and how you're sitting there saying we're not going to have any games here we're, we're going to actually have a real accounting and a, we're going to start really cutting the budget can you talk about this whole concept of 2022 2023 rescissions because you know our audience is not just vast it's an activist audience that wants to get up to speed you're revered as being i think one of the few serious uh, along with some of your colleagues in the 20 uh, a serious deficit hawk. So you can walk through exactly what reality is and what we're talking about on these appropriations bills. In any reality, we don't get stuck with another CR and another omnibus on Christmas Eve this year, sir. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, President or Speaker McCarthy made a promise that uh, he would uh, uh, go back to the 2022 funding levels. Uh, with discretionary spending when he uh, was making the deals to become speaker. Um, he now is talking about using the 2023 funding levels and through rescissions getting down to the 2022 funding levels. So in other words, uh, we would use the ability to go in and claw back some of the COVID money or some of the other money that has been used for uh, electric vehicle recharging stations He wants to, or IRS agents. He wants to go in and claw that money back, which is great. But um, then he would go from 2023 numbers down to 2022 numbers. What we're saying, um, Matt Gates, Andy Biggs, Bob Good, Lauren Boebert, uh, myself, uh, uh, Eli Crane, some others are saying, no, you promised 2022 numbers, go to 2022 numbers, then start clawing back these billions of dollars that have been promised out there, but not spent yet, and use that money to get even further. Steve, this this debt deal that, that Kevin McCarthy and Joe Biden made adds four trillion dollars of debt to our national debt in the next 18 months, four trillion dollars. And what we're saying is that's absolutely unacceptable. We've got to start at 2022 numbers and then start reducing from there. Let, let, let me get back to that in a second. I want to say the trailing 12 months have just come in, the tra- and I'm coming into my Goldman Sachs experience. The projections are always great, but you look at the last 12, it's $2.1 trillion deficit. I think it's not $800 billion in the, uh, until May just in this fiscal year. And the reason is the economy slowing. At the t- current tax structure we have, the tax revenues are coming in lower. I think particularly April and May on, on personal income is like a, a 20% miss or something. Let me pull back the camera. What is it about your colleagues? I mean, look, our audience reveres you and the others, but they're sitting there going, this is kind of basic math. What do your colleagues miss about the financial crisis we're in and how you can't play games anymore on the margins of this federal spending that we've got to get serious about it? Just what, is, because you're, you're, there are many great people that are not with you guys right now, particularly a lot of smart people. What are they missing about this crisis that we're in? Well, Steve, I don't think they're missing anything. I think they're uh, actually playing uh, a game that involves trying to get reelected and uh, somebody else will have the problem eight, 10 years down the road. They hope eight, 10 years down the road. Um, We are going to default. Uh, You know, I I kept hearing uh, during the uh, debt ceiling bill negotiations. Well, you know, we don't want to default in June. This country is going to default. If we don't get our act together and we don't turn this ship around very, very soon, and it may already be too late, uh, we may already be in the throes of the inflationary cycle that results from all of this uh, just absolutely um, uh, irresponsible spending that's going on. When you go back and talk to your constituents in, in Colorado, what are, the, what are the working class and the middle class folks that have their own lives to live that can't? pay attention to politics like the war room posse or war room cadre audience. When, when you're back in town halls and just meeting folks at coffee shops, do they have a, do you think they have a handle on what this crisis is with our na- nation's debt? 
Steve, I have to tell you, every time I go into the uh, vegetable section at my local grocery store, it's a town hall meeting. People are coming up to me and they're asking about the debt. And they understand. They may not understand uh, discretionary spending versus mandatory spending. They may not understand recessions. Um, but they understand that you can't spend more money than you have over a long period of time without very severe consequences. People have that level of common sense that this just doesn't make sense to them. As soon as you get outside the beltway, people understand uh, what's going on. I tell people we have 1,118 unauthorized programs, meaning that Congress hasn't looked at these programs to see if there's any wasteful spending. We have a rule package in the House that says you can't appropriate to unauthorized programs. Every appropriations bill waives that rules, that particular rule, and then appropriates to unauthorized programs. There's not a single hearing in five months of this administration in the House that will look at uh, wasteful spending in these unauthorized programs. People understand where we're going and why we're going there. And it's because of the selfish attitudes that we have in the U.S. House. That gets down to programmatically what you got to do. Do you think McCarthy and leadership will back you up on actually getting to these unauthorized programs? If they're not going to be authorized, you just zero them out. Is that something we can look forward to? Is that going to be another fight? where there's 20 or 30 of you heroes against the rest of the, forget the radical Democrats, against the rest of the caucus? Well, I think, uh, I don't know that they'll have a choice because at some point we've got to do exactly that. We've got to make sure that we are going after the unauthorized programs. Uh, we have known for decades, for example, the, the Endangered Species Act was passed in 1973, reauthorized in 1978 hasn't been reauthorized since. No one has looked at that uh, Endangered Species Act to determine, is there wasteful spending? Is this something we still need? I remember uh, back in the day, Steve, uh, that we were trying to save the bald eagle. Well, the bald eagle is saved. Let's move on. Let's, let's cut that program down so that we can get uh, back on a safe financial footing. We've got about four or five minutes. I know you got to bounce, but it, it, since our audience thinks so highly of you, walk us through the Ken Buck plan of, of not playing games well, what if you were in charge right if, if speaker mccarthy said okay ken i've heard enough you take it it's your deal walk us through your internal logic how, how do we get our hands around this well first steve thank you for coronating me i i appreciate that but i you know the, the reality is we've got to get back to pre uh covid numbers uh, uh president trump and president biden at the beginning of his administration spent money to try to keep this economy going um fine now the now the COVID is over, people should be back at work, and we've got to get back to those pre-COVID numbers. So we have to move back to the 2019-2018 spending levels and make sure that the great economy that President Trump created creates this revenue stream that will help us reduce the deficit. That's the only answer is to spend less. We also are going to have to deal at some point with the mandatory spending side. We are going to have to address Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and other mandatory programs that are out there and make sure that it only happens for those who are uh, young workers, those under 40, under 45, um, and that those who are in Social Security and relying on Social Security have the, the, the uh, comfort uh, of knowing that, that that is gonna be protected. But we can change the, the trajectory that we're on right now if we look at mandatory spending and severely reduce uh, the the uh, discretionary side. Now, Steve, the other thing that we have to do is we have to look at what is a federal program. We should not be in the business of telling school boards, local school boards, what they should be doing. We should not be in the business of telling states how to regulate their environment. Uh, th those are all programs that were intended for the states in our Constitution, and we're overspending in large part because we have in, in, in we have. Uh, enlarge the scope of the federal government. The federal government should be focused on defense. It should be focused on immigration. It should be focused on customs, on maintaining the currency. Those are federal functions. We need to give back to the state those things that are the state's responsibility. Two things. Uh, I noticed after this debacle over the de debt ceiling and all you patriots trying to stand up, they came back after us in the Senate and said, oh, by the way, yeah, it's proved, but we've got to put a pin in it. We've got to have a, a Ukraine supplemental. We're doing a special right now on Ukraine. Is, uh, is the Ukraine supplemental going to pass? I mean, is that another hundred, couple of hundred billion dollars? Don't they realize this money just can't be created out of thin air? 
they don't realize that, uh, Steve. They've been creating money out of thin air for a long time, and we're feeling the effects of it right now in our economy. So they, they talked about a Ukraine supplemental. They talked about a uh, supplemental for defense. So in other words, uh, McCarthy and, and Biden agreed to raise defense spending. Now they want to raise it even further. And as soon as the Republicans say, we want to raise defense spending, the Democrats come along and say, well, we want to raise social spending. And so they, in the past, uh, what I've witnessed is there's a dollar for dollar. We say uh, defense goes up one dollar. They say these, uh, uh, you know, welfare programs, food stamps, other programs go up one dollar. So that that is a very serious problem that we have to address. Is uh, how how a supplemental is going to affect other issues. We can't afford the supplemental, much less uh, a dollar for dollar exchange. Last thing you said earlier in this uh, interview or this conversation that we are going to default and we got to, you know, we got to stop the happy talk. Give me just give me a minute of your logic on that. Of how, how we are going to default. So how to avoid it? Well, the only way to default it is, is to turn the ship around. We have to spend less money. Uh, you know, we aren't we aren't undertaxed, Steve. We are overspent. And uh, the sooner we get that understanding, the better. The problem in politics is it's very difficult to take goodies away from people once you have given them. Once they have started relying on Obamacare, once they have started relying on uh, all of the spending that's out there, it's very difficult to start clawing that back. And that's exactly what we need to do. Uh, if we default, the people who are most at risk, the working class Americans who are just able to make ends meet, are going to be the people who suffer the most. The very people that the Democrats pretend that they are trying to help are the people who are going to suffer. And, and as Republicans, that's our base. We have to stick up for those people. And the way to stick up for them is to make sure that we don't go over the edge and default. Congressman Buck, how do people get to your site to find out more about uh, this fight that you're having as the leading deficit hawk? And what's your social media? Yeah, so the uh, the the best way to contact me is through our office, uh, 202-225-4676. The uh, way to send us uh, emails is buck. Uh, dot, um, ha, dot, oh, I, <laughs> I'm not, I haven't sent myself an email for a while, but <laughs> buck.house.gov is, is the best way to uh, send us an email. And, and my, uh, and my Twitter Buck. handle is at yeah. rep, uh, Ken Buck. At Rep. Ken Buck. Okay, we'll make sure everybody loads in there and follows you closely. Uh, Congressman, thank you for fighting this fight. Thank you for being the leading deficit hawk in the House. Uh, We greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Steve. It's been great to be with you.